Osiris. Hello and welcome. And most importantly, what's going on? It's Karina Reichman here on the ones and twos. And by that, I mean speaking into a microphone with great pleasure and gusto. Joined by my dear pal, I Boogie, Isaac Sloan. I Boogs, how you doing, dude? I'm good. You know, I'm finding that I'm thinking a lot about the future <sighs> as we anticipate some upcoming events. I saw you just announced a Jazz Fest gig. Wildly exciting. Boom, baby. Boom. It's my band's first time in New Orleans. I'm so excited. This, uh, For those who don't know, this will take place uh, late night on Friday, May 5th. That is the Friday of second weekend, late night at the Blue Nile, which is uh, a really fun, fun room to play on Frenchman Street. I've had many late and spectacular shows there with Marco Benevento, and I'm just delighted to... Uh, get to do with my band this year and tickets literally just went on sale you know one of those simultaneous announce and on sale situations so if you're hearing this that means you could buy a ticket to the show so please do and uh, i cannot wait to see you there fucking there's nothing like jazz fest there's nothing like late night jazz fest and i really you know Isaac, i like the way that it uh at jazz fest in in new orleans you can just you can do it whatever way you want to do it you know what i mean and like for me, if I'm playing all these late night shows, I tend to sleep and miss most of the fairgrounds. And by most of, I mean, I tend to miss it all, you know, which some people give me the side eye for. But otherwise, I'm like, yo, if I got to be playing till six in the morning, which happens, you're not going to see me till 4 p.m. You're just not going to see me till 4 p.m. It's not going to happen, you know, and uh, I like that for me. It's really great, though. I suggest if you're not playing until six in the morning, Getting a taste of those fairgrounds is probably good for you. It's one of my favorite things, but I <laughs> totally respect <laughs> missing the fairgrounds as a performer to oh, be able yeah. to sleep in and enjoy all that late night New Orleans has to offer. It's a pretty fun. It's a pretty fun thing, and like you know, it's. Uh, I definitely have no FOMO about missing any fairground stuff. Maybe I'll pop in for a day this year. Who knows? But uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know screw me up i'm just like yeah baby i got gigs to play and they start at 1 30 in the morning and they go all night long yeah you're right <laughs> i don't know if the listeners can hear it sounds like we're uh, in a construction site right now <laughs> the apartment across the hall from us is being renovated i don't know what to say about that they i just thought i'd call attention to it sure so if you hear hammering it's not me hurting isaac in between <laughs> him saying stuff <laughs> Boom, boom, you good? <laughs> so, yo, Isaac, what you got to say about jazz fans? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, man, that's exciting. Last week was exciting in terms of, uh, you know, seeing some pretty cool music, you know? Saw yeah. Some shit. Absolutely. So you saw an amazing band on Thursday, Deftones, at Dude. the Music Hall of Williamsburg. This was an unexpected underplay. We talked a little bit about underplays last week. This was a surprise show for Mark Jacobs. Tell the people how you feel about it. Dude, I mean, it just, it it's sort of... I was so beyond gassed for this, like, I just uh, losing my mind, like, you know, my boyfriend basically texted me, like, four in the afternoon, being like, should we go to this, like, Deftones, Mark Jacobs party tonight, starts at 11 p.m., which is perfect, because we were going to see Big Thief that night at Radio City, probably... I was like, I couldn't really think of two more divergent bands in their sound, you know? <laughs> we have, you know, I, I very much respect Big Thief and I very much love Adrian Lenker. I think she's wildly talented. I think they write incredible music. Um, but a lot of the time it's music that I personally would enjoy to listen to, you know, on my couch yeah, and a somber moment, like, you know, kind of alone. And like, you know, though I did find the show very, like, powerful and compelling, but it was difficult to, like, know that you were about to see one of the most bombastic, raucous, thrashing, crazy bands right after that. You know what I mean? With all these very sort of meditative, slow moments in the Big Thief show, which it was just a funny dichotomy. You know what I mean? If I didn't have in my head that I was going to go see the Deftones play a 500 capacity room after that, I would have definitely had a different feeling about the big thief show though the big sh i will say the big thief show was fucking awesome no you know these are apples and oranges but let me tell you when we pulled up 
the Music Hall of Williamsburg at 11 p.m. I straight up, I pulled both my hamstrings. I was acting a straight fool. I was jumping up and down going, shove it, shove it, shove it. And everybody was like, yo, Jesus, what's wrong with her? And I was like, this is me, man. This is fucking me. I've been thinking a lot about it's me lately. (laughs) You know, because one has to be themselves. God willing. And there's something to it's me. I mean, I think... There's only everything to it's me. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm going to see Five Nights of Goose. Dude, that's you, baby. And I feel like that's an it's me move. Absolutely. And I feel like the listeners of this podcast uh, very much, you know, wouldn't bat an eye. No, I think they identify with that. I think they would very much identify with that. But perhaps other people in your life would be like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, know. yeah, no, it's me. Yeah, and as you should, and you should hold firm to that, my brother. Because fucking what? What people got to say about that, dude? You're going to see five nights of one of your favorite bands. It's very, very cool. I think it's going to be cool. It's at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester. For those who don't know, I don't know if we that needs to be advertised sure. at this point. <laughs> but it's there. It's there. The shows have been sold out since they went on sale. Yeah. And it's uh, it's cool. Like it's kind of incredible to see like Goose with this tour that just blew out as soon as it went up. Meaning every single show is sold out. That's crazy. <laughs> it's a very interesting thing, and uh, you know, kind of a, a missed uh, music market that, as we've talked about some on this podcast, uh, is uh, a very kind of fickle thing at times. The most, the most. And it's one of those things where, you know, it it can come, it can go. You have no rhyme, no reason. Like, you know, it's uh, it's a good, like, when things are happening like that, though, and they're capitalizing and we're going and people are excited, it's very exciting. And it's easy and amazing sort of to get swept up in the revelry of it you know and i'm stoked for them and stoked for all who are attending namely you my dear pal (laughs) among everybody else but yeah no this is uh it's an exciting it's an exciting moment in a very fickle world and industry and whatnot and just you know you know that they're soaking it up and they're you know getting ready to put on five incredible shows for the people well, you know, amidst some of the fickleness, there are, you know, so many valiant attempts on the part of so many people to put on all kinds of incredible musical experiences. And I think this week we had a plethora of summer festivals get announced. There are lineups of festivals that people have come to expect as annual events. And there are a number of new festivals on the scene coming up this year. Karina? Do you want to shed some light on this? I do. I do. And, you know, it's true. It's, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Like just last week, I believe we saw the Echo Land Music Festival in, uh, you know, it's taking place at the Spirit of the Suwannee Music Park where they host, you know, such events as Halloween, among others. And, uh, you know, this came up with Tyler Childers, Wolfpack, Phil and Friends, Robert Plant, Tenacious D, Nathaniel Ratliff, Niall Rogers. Flaming Lips, like a, a lot of bands, you know, and uh, and this very kind of unfortunately, all, you know, got canceled and it's not scheduled to happen until May 17th, you know. So it's like just as this, I, you know, to, to exemplify the fickleness of this kind of business and all of these things, like that's an incredible lineup, but clearly something went wrong and the tickets were not selling or whatever. And, uh, and here we are, you know, just as one door closes about 17 more opened. And (laughs) we have the announcement of the sound on sound festival in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yep. I believe that's, it's in its second year. Right. Oh, totally. And, uh, but the lineup just got announced. It features, you know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, John Mayer, Alanis Morissette, Trey Anastasio, Nathaniel Rateliff, Dispatch, Lord Huron, Mount Joy, Steel Pulse, quite a bit of bands, quite a bit of bands. And that sort of harkens a little bit to, uh, obviously, you know, different programming, but uh, the great gathering of the vibes that took place in Bridgeport, Connecticut for many years. Right. It is that seaside park where that festival once was. And, uh, you know, a beautiful place (laughs) in a lot of respects. Certainly. Certainly. And it's, uh, you know, honestly, after reading that after the Echo Land Festival, I got canceled. A lot of overlap. A lot of overlap. We have, you know, kind of a few jammy things, but a lot of, you know, adult contemporary indie, 
you know, Chili Peppers, you know, a band in their, you know, third decade, fourth decade, like completely, you know, one of the greatest to ever do it. John Mayer, Say No More, Alanis, Legend, blah, blah, blah. It's, uh... Karina doesn't like Alanis Morissette. <laughs> I don't like Alanis Morissette either. But it was just funny that you tried to give her lip service and then just said blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I really tried to, you know... <laughs> I you know it's funny like I don't I I can't think of another kind of storied musical act like that that I have like a distaste for the way I sort of don't care for Alanis and I hate to even say that I know I hate to say it too I, I want to wanna like her uh, music. yeah and I like her I think she's very cool yeah, yeah bless her heart it's all good I just don't really care for her music and she you know and also a fellow female performer like god forbid I say that like that's just terrible you know what I mean I should be like waving the Alanis flag and yet Isaac I'm not I'm just not but for those of you who want to see her on Sunday, October 1st in Bridgeport, Connecticut, I know it's going to be like, you want to know. Holy shit. Anyway, um, moving on. We have another festival. This one is taking place over, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday, August 19th and 20th at the historic Bethelwood Center for the Arts and, uh, you know, otherwise known as the site of the 1969 Woodstock Festival. Once again, we are seeing Tyler Childers top these lineups. It is pretty shocking. It has been, you know, just a few years since he, you know, was headlining the Music Hall of Williamsburg. Now he is billed over the Trey Anastasio Band and Dispatch on his day. Pretty intense. And uh, on the other day, we have the Lumineers, the War on Drugs, Band of Horses, Trampled by Turtles, Margot Price. You name it, baby. You name it. This is another festival in the lineage of attempts to do something around Woodstock. Is that correct? I mean, this is at Bethel Woods. This is the site of the original Woodstock Festival. It's not being billed as explicitly as the Woodstock 50 Festival that uh, also did not see the light of day a few years ago. Uh, but I think uh, there is on-site camping, which is the first time since the Woodstock Festival that these grounds have had that. I think that's true, and I think, you know, they definitely make mention of the fact that it is on the historic, you know, Woodstock site um, in their branding and whatnot, which is, you know, classic. I would do the same if I were putting on this festival. You know, you want to milk the uh, <laughs> the appeal <laughs> and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, that's yet yet another one that popped up this week, Isaac. It's uh, it's seems good. It's yet again sort of like a crossover... Uh, you know slightly jammy but not very jammy mainly sort of kind of indie alt adult contemporary call it what you will you know so that's exciting that's exciting and then of course we have the very very large scale outside lands in golden gate park in san francisco i had the pleasure of playing this festival one time in 2017 and I had the best time. I had the fucking best time at this festival. And you went years before that as a, as a mere child, Isaac. Yeah, I attended twice. I think in 2010 and 2011. Wild. And really uh, loved it. There's nothing quite like being in that park, being in San Francisco, uh, and soaking in so much music. I mean, that is a stacked festival. No doubt. I remember doubt. getting to see Fish and Muse and The Strokes and Further and STS9. Wow. And Al Green. That's crazy. <laughs> it was very, yeah, very cool. I think it's it verged into a little bit more. I think Odessa is headlining this year and they're the first EDM act to headline the festival. So I think it's it's really changed and grown in new and cool ways i remember seeing janelle monet like open the day there at like noon on a side stage wow and she is one of the headliners this oh, year cool. she is nice. quite literally billed as that's one. what we like to see yeah it's amazing to see that honestly Love janelle monet. and we have so for headliners here we have kendrick lamar the foo fighters odessa lana del rey the 1975 megan the stallion zed janelle monet maggie rogers and fisher I also love Megan the Stallion. I would love to be at a festival that Megan plays. You and me both. Oh that my God. would be very, it would be great to see her set. Really wild, actually. Really wild. <laughs> 
Um, so that's just a big one, man. That's a big one. That's it a comes, big one. It comes in hot. It's uh, it's one of the major festivals, I would argue, of of the U.S. You know, and it's uh, it's nice to see it back in August during like you know the few pandemic shakeups. There were uh, some outside lands that I believe took place in October. Uh, perhaps one, perhaps just last year, maybe the year before. I should have uh, checked that out before I opened my mouth. But anyway, yeah, this is it's uh, August. August in San Francisco feels right, you know. You know, definitely. And another major festival, the Telluride Bluegrass Festival, announced its fiftieth anniversary. And Telluride in June also sounds right. I have never been to this festival, but uh, you know its lineup boasts Robert Plant and Allison Krauss, String Cheese Incident, Sam Bush Band, Bela Fleck and the Flecktones, Emmy Lou Harris with Watch House, Punch Brothers, Del McCurry, Leftover Sam, and Nickel Creek. I mean, this is really. For somebody who loves bluegrass, this is kind of the pinnacle in a lot of respects, and I don't think this will be my year to go, but uh, it sure looks very, very special. I hope to make it there one year. If you're listening and you've been, let us know what you thought. Tell you right, bluegrass, is it all it's cracked up to be? I imagine it probably is. It probably is. And on that same tip, Isaac, there's also the Telluride Blues and Brews Festival. Oh. Which I have had the pleasure and privilege of playing uh, in 2018. It was an incredible, incredible experience, <laughs> honestly. And I had a, uh, the, our green room was a teepee with like a very pimped out teepee. And let me tell you, if you're putting on a festival and you have the means to give your artist a pimped out teepee, they love it. And I highly suggest doing so. <laughs> so this year we have Bonnie Raitt, The Roots, The Revivalists, The Word, uh, Kingfish, a bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. Record company, Anders Osborne, The Heavy Heavy, a band I like quite a bit and had the pleasure of seeing at the Mercury Lounge recently. Lots of stuff going on, man. And this is uh, basically Telluride, like the moral of this story is that Telluride rules, and is awesome. <laughs> I need to make the pilgrimage. Somehow, some way, I will make it there. Oh, you will. Oh, you will. It's so cool. It's just like this mount it's 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 beautiful, gotta say. And I'm I'm you know, I'm more of a beach person than a mountain person. I know some people just flip shits and go nuts for mountains as such. Not necessarily what makes me flip shits and go nuts. I like, I like, you know, I find the ocean to be my favorite natural sort of occurrence uh, in this world. <laughs> but holy shit, dude. Fucking tell you right, the mountains, dude, this shit's insane. You gotta go. Unbelievable. Wow. So that's all really very nice and good as, uh, you know, to quote Seinfeld. And uh, Isaac, you're going to see Goose. There's, um, there's dinner party happening on thursday which is uh oh yes robert glasper terminal five events very correct isaac it's featuring robert glasper kamasi washington and terrace martin Ooh. it's uh yeah oh, as the kids from berkeley would say <laughs> you guys know uh what isaac's referring to here is is you know it's a it's like a berkeley jazz cat thing right to say you know, if somebody like a musician's particularly killing, right? Which is another Berkeley kind of. <laughs> this is Berkeley School of Music. Oh yeah, E E E E, <laughs> Berk L E E. Um. Anyway, and uh, and yeah, no. If somebody's killing it, and they're like, you know, really going in on their solo, and it's just like, you know, it's definitely got some common tones in there, whatever. Natural reaction is for them to go, ooh. <laughs> And that's just hilarious and, and just so true. It's just so true. I love that. <laughs> it's nothing better. It's a great way to react to music. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Wow, Isaac. I mean, you know, this festival dump was important because literally they all just got absolutely kicked out uh, this week. I have a little bit of hot goss, which is that I am, uh, I announced this yesterday. I'm going to be DJing. It's a very rare Karina Reichman DJ set, a.k.a. DJ K Arena, uh, for the VIPs at Peach Fest this summer. And that just got announced yesterday. I'm delighted. And it's going to be 30 minutes of pure, uncut chaos for that ass. <laughs> chaos with a K. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything um, with a K. <laughs> everything with a K. Uh, if you haven't heard had the pleasure of it's not even hearing if you've uh, never embraced 
the uh, Karina Reichman DJ said, I hope you have the opportunity to. <laughs> You're going to get swept up in my enthusiasm. There's no words to describe it. I, I, I wanted to come out with something to really sell the people on you as a DJ, but <laughs> it really is just kind of a, a whole otherworldly experience. I mean, <laughs> if I'm thinking of Tootsie Roll by the 69 Boys into Hoochie Mama by the 2 Live Crew into Big Pimpin' by Jay-Z, that's what you're going to get. And you're going to get your girl me on the mic just, you know, saying absolute nonsense along with it. And it's going to be really fun. I it's really look so forward to it. It's so welcome that a thing like Peach Fest to be <sighs> able to go to a place and do that. It's unbelievable. And honestly, 30 minutes is exactly the right amount of time for me. I think that's great. And I'm just going to come in super hot. And I really look forward to it, honestly. I think it's going to be a total blast. So festival season, everything getting announced all at once. Very exciting times. Isaac's about to go on the five-night pilgrimage to the Capitol Theater. Let's see if I make it. We'll see what happens. Oh, It'll he's be kind of it. an experiment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I leave on tour, by the way, with Mr. Marco Benevento on Friday. Nine shows in nine days. Lots of people think that's a lunatic move. It might be. But it's uh, it's definitely, <laughs> we've done much worse in this band. We've done 17 shows in seven days. and um, Seven days. Sorry, 17 days. 17 shows, 17 days. Thanks, dude. Sometimes it feels like you guys play 17 shows in seven days. Does it ever. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. You play, play for a long time these days. Oh, yeah. Marco shows are long. There was definitely, there was a show. We had a tour bus in 2017, and we did like a, like a radio thing at 9 a.m., and then another like radio or like some something at like you know 1 p.m and then the show right which i know like bands do this all the time and whatnot but like i'd never done like three shows in a day yeah and I no, remember, that's aggressive yeah yeah and i remember just being like what the ever loving fuck like that was amazing but like shit that's a lot i don't know <laughs> So we're going to get after it. The tour starts in Jersey City, baby, on Friday night, White Eagle Hall. I will see you there, or I will see you another time. And uh, looking forward to it. It goes, you know, Jersey City, Philly, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Madison, Wisconsin, lots of places in between. It's going to be great. So looking forward to seeing you out there. And then uh, then I'll be back, Isaac. And then I'll be back. It's going to be great. Um, this has been incredible. We'd like to shout out our dear friend, RJB. He is the mainest man. He is actually coming to see the Marco Benevento show on Saturday in Philly. I really look forward to seeing him there and asking him to take me out to dinner. I think he'll also be at the Goose Show on Sunday. What a lunatic. So we'll be seeing you this weekend, RJ. Yeah, both of us respectively. You can't get enough. <laughs> Maybe at a festival. Maybe at a festival. One of the many that got announced today. One that will get announced tomorrow. Who's to say? Oh, man. Inappropriate happiness, listeners. We can't even tell you how much we love you. I can't even believe uh, any of this. This is just wonderful. Isaac, you are my mainest dude. Shout out to all of you. Have a wonderful week, and we will chat anon. Bye bye. I've been jumping turnstiles, sailing taxis with intent. Do you need directions? I bet it's not where you... Osiris.